Does your husband speak uh, English? No. He does? Yes. Oh, okay. So you don't have to translate for him? No. no. He, oh, he speaks German. He speaks German. And English. And English. But me too, we communicate in English. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Italian and English and German. And English. He looks Italian. I know. <laughs> Where are you from in Germany? Austria. 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 Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> Not from Germany. That's why you look at it. All right. Om Jnana Timirandasya Gananjana Salakaya Chaksura Militanye Natasmai Si Guru Maha Ichaitanna manavistam savitanye na bhutale sayam rupam karamaya dilanti swapadanti kam. First of all, I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha and Shiksha Guru, Niti Lila Parishom, Vishnu Pada Satura Satasi Sima, Srila Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. And then I offer my humble obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Shiksha and Sanyas Guru. Nitya Veda Parisho, Vishnu Padasa Tarasata Sisi Manchula, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I offer my humble obeisances <coughs> unto the lotus feet of my Shiksha Gurus, Srila Gorgovinda Goswami Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Vigan Bharti Goswami Maharaj. And I offer my humble obeisances unto the Rupanuga Guru Varga. Uh, Shiva Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj, Shiva Bhakti uh, Siddhanta Sarasati Goswami Thakur, and Shiva Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and Shiva Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, and to all of the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who are present here today, my humble obeisances, and uh, thank you very much, Hare Krishna. You're comfortable there, Snigda? You all right? I think so. Okay. So we're continuing with Bhagavad Gita, doing uh, an overview of Bhagavad Gita. We're going to try and cover uh, uh, several chapters today. We discussed yesterday that there are three divisions to the Gita. Do you remember the three divisions to the Gita that we discussed yesterday? Huh? What are the first six chapters? Was it yesterday or before yesterday? Oh, yesterday. Yesterday we discussed the three divisions of the Gita. The first six, middle six. It's right. considered karma yoga. Yes, the day before yesterday. Yeah, right. It's all considered karma yoga. First six. Yes, Nishkarm karma yoga, the first six chapters. Book cover. Yes. Prabhupada gave the... Uh, 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 Analogy. Remember the analogy Prabhupada gave? What was the analogy that Prabhupada gave? Huh? No, no, that was Guru Dave. Wrong cover, back cover, and... In center, yes. Prabhupada said that the first six chapters are the front cover, and the last six are the back cover, and the middle six are the actual book. Okay, so that's... Prabhupada's analogy. And then Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, he said, the, no. Well, the lid? No, that's Gurudev. Okay, so what is Gurudev? Gurudev borrowed his analogy from Yamunacharya. What was his analogy? Treasure chest analogy. How does it work? First six chapters are? The bottom. The box itself, yes. Last six chapters? The lid. Yes. And the middle? The treasure. Can they hear you? Do you need to sit over there? They have it? You're ready? Okay. <laughs> All right. And Russian translation. That's why I was asking if you had a translate, because she's translating into Russian, so I didn't want the two of you to... <laughs> Okay. Um, what's the matter? Oh, the fan. I was asking. The fan. You want the fan on? 
doesn't matter. You feel you need the fan? Anybody need the fan? You're good? It's cool enough, the breeze going back and forth. Okay. Alright, so Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, he's the one who defines what the first six chapters, he doesn't use a metaphor, he uses a direct statement to explain what are the first six, the middle six, and the last six. So what are the first six chapters of the Gita that we're going to discuss today? No, 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 no. Karma Yoga. Karma, Nishkarma Karma Yoga. First six chapters of the Gita are Nishkarm Karma Yoga. It talks about Karma Yoga. Even though the different chapters are explain has different titles that talk about different things and we're going to explain that when we talk about it today the last six are what what are the last six yan yoga yan yoga right okay and the middle six are bhakti yoga, bhakti yoga. okay so <clears throat> therefore gurudev's analogy the bottom of the treasure chest is karma, this karma, karma yoga. The top is gyan yoga. The treasure is bhakti. Yes. Okay. Hence Prabhupada's analogy. The front and back book covers. And the, the book itself, bhakti. The six chapters in the middle. Okay. What does Gurudev add? What does Gurudev add when he talks about the commentary of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur about karma yoga and jnana yoga, or karma yoga and jnana yoga? What is the value of karma and jnana? Do they have any value in and of themselves on their own? No, but there is sadhana to attain the sadhana. Okay, but no. so so. They need they need bhakti to get the results of karma or jnana. Yes, without bhakti, either mixed or dominating karma or jnana, there's no real fruit. And bhakti mixed or dominating karma yoga brings about what? It brings about the, it's the sadhana that brings about the practice of bhakti, and. Karma, uh, the jnana yoga mixed with or dominated by bhakti yoga brings about what? Kevala bhakti. Huh? Remember these points that Gurudev makes in his commentary? This is the value, remember the value of Gurudev's commentary. So important. Okay? Prabhupada is giving us an overview. He's saying everything is bhakti. Every chapter, wherever someone sacrifices the fruit of anything, the fruit of work, the fruit of knowledge, any sacrifice they make, he says, you're sacrificing this to Krishna. It's bhakti. You're giving it up to Krishna. It's bhakti. Which bhakti? A rope sada bhakti? Sangha sada bhakti? Sadhana sada bhakti? Gyan mishra? Karna mishra? Which bhakti? Gurudev is giving us the details. So important. So important. Because he's giving us the translation of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur's commentary and he's giving us the translation of Bhakti Manod Thakur's commentary with his own commentary mixed together. So within those three commentaries we're getting details. Which verse means which form of Bhakti? So, both the Gitas have to be read. Otherwise, the import, uh, importance of the Gita. Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur was the one who showed us how Bhagavad Gita relates to the Gaudiya Vaishnav Siddhanta given by Rupa Goswami on behalf of Mahaprabhu. Hence, we have to understand the importance of Gita that Gurudev is giving us. Huh? All right. So now we're going to discuss the points about the first six chapters. Okay. 
So here we see that the chapters are named differently. They're not all called Karma Yoga. The third chapter is called Karma Yoga. The fifth chapter is called Lishkar Karma Yoga. The fourth chapter is called Gyan Yoga. The sixth chapter is called Samkhya Yoga or Stanga Yoga. The second chapter is called, you know, the complete the <coughs> discussions uh, between. And Krishna himself dis, d, 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 divides the second chapter into two divisions. But yet, it's called. Karma Yoga, why? Because in each case they're offering some fruit to Krishna and they're also keeping something for themselves. They want something for themselves. Hence, it's Karma Yoga. Because there, it's not Kevala Bhakti. It's not pure devotion. In pure devotion, you give everything to Krishna with no care for yourself. Huh? In the paramount position, as Mahaprabhu is praying, praying to, uh, in the mood of Radharani, he's praying, okay, you cavort with your other lovers in front of me, and uh, you, you pay no mind to me whatsoever. Or you love me with your embrace. Either way, it doesn't matter. You're always my Lord. I accept you and love you unconditionally. Unconditional. It's not that I love you only when you uh, embrace me and I become angry with you when you embrace another. No. I love you always. Of course, in Rasatapa that's not what happens. But <laughs> Rani gets very upset. <laughs> but this is the mood. This is the mood. Okay. So, let's look at the structure of the second chapter. We start in the middle, because in the middle, it divides up the chapter and explains. Verse number 39 is the key verse in the second chapter. I want to make a note of that. Verse number 39. Why? Because here Krishna divides the second chapter and explains how it's structured. Thus far, I have declared to you the analytical knowledge of Samkhya philosophy. Now, listen to the knowledge of yoga, buddhi yoga, eh? in the verse in Sanskrit. Ishyate bihita samkhya. I have now, I have already declared to you Samkhya. Buddhir yoga tva imam shinu. Shinu, listen. Please hear me. Shinu, uh, Buddhi Yoga. I'm going to explain to you about Buddhi Yoga. <laughs> Buddhya Yukto Yaya Partha Karma Bandham Praya Prahayasi Prahayasi. Yeah, that uh, how you can be released from Karma Bandha, the bondage of reactions to your work. Mm -hmm. well, when you act by such intelligence of buddhi yoga, uh, without fruit of result, then you can free yourself from the bondage of work. So, Krishna is explaining the two things. And Gurudev in his commentary concurs, Prabhupada concurs, that this buddhi yoga means bhakti yoga. It is the beginning. Now, why Krishna is explaining first Sankhya Yoga and then Bhakti Yoga? Why? Think about it. Let's read what is the explanation of Sankhya by Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur. Samkhya Yoga, that which properly illuminates the tattva of an object is called Samkhya. Samkhya Yoga gives complete knowledge about the tattva of the Atma and the Ana. Hello? Oh, too loud. Hello? Hello? No, I didn't even touch it. 
It's your intention. Just by coming near, they fear. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Hello, hello. Okay, hello. Hi. Now it's not so loud. Better now? Yes. Snig, snig. <laughs> okay. So, is it better now? <laughs> Sankhya Yoga gives complete knowledge about the tattva of Atma and Anatma, or in an inert object, an inert object. So, what is Krishna giving Sankhya first? And then he's giving Bhakti. Why he's dividing this knowledge like this? Why is he first trying to teach Arjuna this thing? Sankhya, the analysis between what is the Prabhupada always say Sankhya is? Understanding the difference between matter and spirit and controller of both. Yes. So Krishna says, thus far I have declared to you the analytical knowledge of Sankhya philosophy. Now listen to the knowledge of yoga by where one works without fruit of result. But why he taught first Sankhya? Yeah. To make a platform. Platform. What platform? What is he teaching Arjuna? What is he trying to teach him? You are not you're, the, you're not the yes. body. Yes. Because how can you give up the fruit of the work if you think that you're the body? You think I'm working? The fruits belong to me. Why I should give them up? First thing is this. First, understand not the body. Then, once understanding I'm not the body, now, now, we can hear, okay, I have to give up the fruit of the work. Otherwise, why I give it up? <laughs> why give up the fruits? Fruits belong to this body, I am this body. So, this is why Sankhi Yoga is explained in the beginning of second chapter. Every other scripture talks about the soul. They say, oh, there's a soul, you're the soul. They just say that, like that. You're the soul. Uh, your the soul is eternal. Very, very simple. But who gives the detailed knowledge of soul? Here in Gita, right from the beginning, the first knowledge that Krishna gives in the beginning of second chapter is detailed knowledge of the soul. Everything is given in the beginning. Right from the beginning you understand why I am not this physical body. Why I am the soul. Mm -hmm clear from the very beginning. The sandal, the sandal wood. I eat it. Yes. All. I want to do this. Thank you. Okay. Now we are giving class uh, under D. I am giving class. I need uh, the attention. <laughs> huh? The attention. I need everyone's attention, please. Under D is more important. <laughs> All right. So try to focus. All right, so now uh, we see these verses in the beginning of second chapter very clearly explained the meaning of the soul, the difference between the physical body and the spiritual body. 
how the physical body is changing, but the spiritual body remains. So this knowledge is given in detail in Gita. Therefore, Prabhupada says in his first chapter that all knowledge that is given in any other scripture will be given in Bhagavad Gita and knowledge that is not given in other scriptures will also be given in Gita. Prabhupada is saying. Here we see that knowledge. Right there, right from the beginning. Beginning of second chapter. Everything is given. Very clear. Very, very clear. Okay? <coughs> so, also, accepting the Guru in mood of a disciple. Huh? This is given in 10th and 11th verse of the Gita. Huh? Because Arjuna, he has given all his arguments to Krishna. Oh Krishna, I cannot kill. We cannot kill. It is said in the Vedas not to kill. Thou shalt not kill, says Moses. Huh? Do not kill. Oh, how I can kill my... You want to sit over there, Lola? Because there's no... Thank you, Lola, for coming. Very kind of you. My God, sister. Okay. And we should... Uh, Honor our father and mother, Moses says. Yes, we should not kill Bhishma. We should not kill Drona. They are our gurus, our grandfather. Yes, Krishna says all this. Arjuna says all these, gives all these arguments. Huh? I will not fight this battle. I will put down my arrows and I will turn my other cheek. Huh? Like Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Because if they have this battle and we kill all the, all the elders, then the women will be unprotected and we will have Varna Sankara. Yeah, this is, one should not covet thy neighbor's wife. Okay? All these religious and sub-religious principles of Bible and Quran and everything, Arjuna is giving to Krishna and Krishna yeah. is just listening, he is not saying anything. Then finally, Arjuna realizes, okay, I've run out of breath now, I've made all my arguments. <laughs> Krishna is saying nothing. So, I should uh, accept what I am. Now what does Arjuna say? Having spoken thus, Arjuna chastised her the enemies told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight, and he fell silent. At that time, Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief stricken Arjuna. The Blessed Lord said, while speaking learned words, you are mourning for that which is not worthy of grief. You are speaking like a pundit. Huh? You are speaking very learned words. Pragna Vadam Syabhasya Se. You are speaking very learned words. Basha. Namasham Chanti Pandita. But those who are wise lament neither for the living nor the dead. Jesus gives this teaching also in the Bible? Do you remember? Let the dead bury the dead. Yes. James comes to Jesus and says, I want to go with the old master. He said, then you should come. He said, but my my father has died or my brother has died, somebody has died in my family, I have to remain here and bury him. And then I can come. And what he said? Come with me now. Come with me now and let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> Those who are dead, they cannot see. So, 
this is the mood. Uh -huh. And then Arjuna, he accepts Krishna. Okay. Now I accept you as my guru. Tells him. And then Krishna begins to speak Bhagavad Gita. Krishna explains everything in Gita. Yes? Understand? All right, so. Uh, Prabhu, you go to verse 54 to the purport. six chapters, so I can't go over all the details uh, of the entire second chapter. We're just going to go over the highlights, okay? All right. So, uh, verse 40, important verse. Why is verse 40 an important verse? Huh? Who remembers? There is no loss or diminution when one takes up this process. No loss or diminution. Bhakti is always fruitful. If you don't accomplish it in this life, you will take it with you to the next life. Talk. When we discuss the difference between the body and the soul, what are the two components of the material body? Earth, body, and subtle. Yeah. The gross body is earth, water, fire, air, ether. The subtle body is Mind. intelligence and false ego. Okay. Then what's inside the gross body? The subtle body. What's inside the subtle body? Huh? Huh? Soul. Atma. Soul. Soul is inside the subtle body. And what emanates from the soul? Consciousness. Consciousness. Consciousness emanates from the soul the way sunshine emanates from the sun. 13th chapter, 23rd verse. Huh? Okay. So you have the subtle body and you have the consciousness. Subtle body is eternal. Yes. Subtle body is temporary. So your temporary desires for accomplishing knowledge in the material world, those impressions go on the subtle body. That's why you see a child who has uh, five years of age or seven years of age and they have mastered martial arts or Rachmaninoff's piano concerto or playing some other instrument or whatever it may be. Huh? How did they master that? At five years old. From where did they learn it? They brought it with them in the physical body, in the subtle body, subtle body. Huh? This will be explained in 15th chapter, how the subtle Vayurgandha Nivashaya, just as the air carries the aroma, the subtle body carries the soul to the next physical body. So, those material impressions for knowledge, material knowledge, are carried in subtle body. And the impressions of bhakti are carried on the consciousness. Why? Because consciousness is eternal, bhakti is eternal. So those impressions of bhakti are carried in the consciousness. When uh, my son was two years old, he saw the arti in the temple. Then he said, came home, I do, I do. I do, I do. So we gave him the arti paraphernalia and he began doing arti, exactly like what he saw the pujari doing. So these impressions come from where? These impressions come from the consciousness.
they're eternal. He brought it with him from his previous birth. That's why he took birth in the Holy Family. He's bringing the impressions with him. So very important to understand the difference. Bhakti impressions, consciousness. Material impressions, the subtle body. <clears throat> so, verse 40, nothing is lost, huh? there's no loss or diminution. 44th verse, one has to have resolute determination. Huh? Yeah, one must have resolute determination to practice the process of bhakti. What are the example Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gives? Story of the wedding party. Yes, the bird is also there. Yes. The little bird had the eggs taken by the ocean. So she started to try and empty the ocean herself. <laughs> taking one beak full of time <coughs> to get her eggs. And ocean was laughing. Then Garuda came and said, Oh, I'm going to empty you very soon. Then <laughs> ocean said, Okay, here's the eggs. So that kind of determination will bear spiritual fruits. And if you have wedding parties, a little bit different. They got on the boat in the night and told them to take, please take us to the other shore, the other city, in the river for the wedding. When they woke up the next morning, they were still in the same place. They had not gone. But the boat people said, we, we, we were rowing all night, rowing, rowing, rowing. But anchor was there. Anchor was in the ground. So, if you are working very hard, but you are anchored with material desires, then you will not make progress. These are anarchists. The anarchists will anchor you. But how do we get rid of anarthas? What does Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur say? 25th chapter, Saptam Prasangam Mamaviri Sambhito, 25th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd canto, Saptam Prasangam Mamaviri Sambhito, the Bhakti Vrtana is Rasayana Katha. When you hear this Rasayana Katha that rejuvenates you, When you hear, he specifically says, those excellent pastimes from the lips of the pure devotees. Then first thing is, the anarchas are removed. Then, nishta. Then, ruchi. Then, asak. Then, bhav. At each stage, he says, required you have to hear from the sadhana. And by hearing the excellent pastimes told by the sadhu, then you will get blessings confirmed. Then you will get progress in bhakti. And when you hear from a conditioned soul like me, what do you get? You only get some inspiration to do bhajana kriya. I cannot remove your narcos because I have so many myself. But your devotee who has no anarchist, he can remove your anarchist. All right. <coughs> karma eva adhikara stay, verse 47. Ma phaleshu kadachana mat karma dipala hetu ur ma te sangos You have a right to do your duty your prescribed duties, but you have no right to the fruits of your work. They should be offered to Krishna. Now, in verse 54, Gurudev teaches us something very important. Because Arjuna asks a question here. O oh, Keshava, what are the symptoms of a person whose intelligence is fixed in samadhi? How does he speak, how does he sit, and how does he walk? He asks this question. 
very important. But who wants to understand how to identify a pure soul? So now, Gurudev, in the purport, gives us something very valuable. He teaches us all the 16 questions that Arjuna asks in the Gita. Throughout the course of the Gita, Arjuna asks 16 important questions. This one, 254, then third chapter, first verse, third chapter, 36th verse, fourth chapter, fourth verse, fifth chapter, first verse, sixth chapter, 33rd verse, sixth chapter, 37th verse, eighth chapter, first and second verse, tenth chapter, 16th verse, eleventh chapter, third verse, eleventh chapter, 31st verse, twelfth chapter, first verse, thirteenth chapter, first verse, 14th chapter, 21st verse, 17th chapter, 1st verse, and 18th chapter, 1st verse. So, throughout the whole Gita now, up to the 18th chapter, Arjuna will ask 16 questions. And Krishna will answer each of those 16 questions. Huh? So, very important to understand what is uh, being given here by Gurudev in this purport, this is another purport which you should study carefully, look at all these 16 questions and understand them clearly, okay? All right. chapter, verse 54 in the purport, where Dave gives all the 16 questions. So that you can understand how Arjuna is approaching huh? uh, And Gurudev, uh, Krishna gives the analogy to Arjuna that uh, you can withdraw your senses from the objects of the senses the way the tortoise withdraws his lens into his body. He brings the limbs out when he needs to use them and he withdraws them when there is any attack. Huh? If you go and you hit the shell of the tortoise or make any attack, then immediately everything goes inside. So similarly, the advanced devotee his senses come out when it's time to use them in Krishna's service. And if there's any threat to his spiritual life, immediately the senses are withdrawn. And Dhyayato Vishaya Pum Sam Sangha Station Vijaya. Verse 62, 63. Sangat Sanjaya Jai Kama Kama Kuroh Vijaya. First, Dhyayato, meditation on the objects of the senses. Dhyaya, meditating on the vishaya. The objects of the vishaya, the senses. Dhyayato, vishaya, from some sangha station vijayate. We become attached. I want. Sangat sanjayate kama, that by this attachment, dwelling on the attachment, then we become kama, lusty, desires. I want, I want, I want. When we don't get the object of our desire, Come, grow the vijaya, then anger. Okay, and one who becomes angry is taking the path to hell. Yes. All right. So we have discussed here the second chapter. All right. Now we move on to the third chapter. The 
various processes of karma, yoga, jnana, and tapasya did not give their own results independently. This is from Gurudev's commentary on the third verse of the third chapter. They are only able to produce beneficial results by taking the support of bhakti. Nirbhun bhakti, however, can give Krishna brain independently without the help of these other processes. Bhakti yoga mixed with jnana or karma is the sadhana for achieving moksha. There are two types of nishta, staunch faith related to this sadhana. The first is possessed by those with pure hearts, who ascend the path of bhakti yoga through their steady faith in samkhya or jnana yoga. The second is the faith of those whose hearts are impure, but who by performing nishkam karma offered to Sri Bhagavan can also ascend the path of Jnana Yoga and ultimately achieve Bhakti. Do you understand the two distinctions? Rude is making an important distinction about faith. Remember when we were talking about what the Vedas give? What are the four things that the Vedas give? Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. Dharma, Artha, Karma, Moksha. The Dharma is used for attaining Dharma. Religious practices are used for worshiping various deities, for achieving Artha, economic development, and Kama, sense pleasure. Huh? And when one is finished with that, and no longer sees the benefit in it, then they use Anjopasana, the worship of the five deities, and the meditation on Brahman to achieve moksha, liberation from the material. So Gurudev is saying, bhakti yoga mixed with jnana or kama is the sadhana for achieving moksha. But there are two types of nishta related to this sadhana with pure hearts who ascend the path of bhakti through the steady faith in Sankhya and Gyan. Analytical study of material nature and the uh, analysis, uh, the analysis of this material world and the knowledge of scripture. Uh, they're Gyanis, they're Gyanis, but with bhakti, mixed with bhakti. That faith that yes, I will achieve Krishna through this path with pure heart, well, they can, he says, uh, ascend to the path of pure bhakti yoga. The second is faith of those persons whose hearts are impure. They still have desires for the fruits of the material world but who by performing Nishkarm Karma offered to Sri Bhagavan can also ascend the path of Jnana Yoga and ultimately achieve it. So if your heart is pure, I've given up. I don't want material pleasure. I want only bhakti. You can ascend to the path of bhakti. Or with Jnana mixed with bhakti. Or if your heart is impure and you have faith, okay, I will offer the fruits of my work to Krishna. Something for Krishna, something for me. <laughs> Gradually you will get the jnana by which you will come to the point of achieving bhakti. You understand? This is Gurudev's purport, third chapter of the Gita. Okay. Third verse. Then, ninth verse. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. 
Otherwise, work binds one to this material world. Therefore, O son of Kunti, perform your prescribed duties for his satisfaction, and in that way you will always remain unattached and free from bondage. O Kundeya, all actions other than Nishkarma Karma Yoga offered to Sri Vishnu are a cause of bondage to this world. Therefore, become free from all desires for the fruits of your actions and perform appropriate actions solely for its satisfaction. This is two translations of the same verse, one by first one Prabhupada, second one Gurudev. So, in uh, verses uh, in the third chapter, I can't move this thing fast enough. sent forth generations of men and demigods along with sacrifices for Vishnu and bless them by saying be thou happy by this yagya sacrifice because performance will give you uh, will bestow upon you all desirable things the demigods being pleased by sacrifices will also please you thus nourishing one another they will reign general prosperity in the world in charge of the various necessities of life, the demigods being satisfied by the performance of yagya, supply all necessities to man. But he who enjoys these gifts without offering them to the demigods in return is, eternal, is certainly a thief. The devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sins because they eat food which is offered first for sacrifice. Others who prepare food for personal sense enjoyment verily only eat sin. Fourteenth verse, very important. So we see, I'm going to talk about that verse in a minute. I'm not the Vanti Bhutani. So we see that Krishna is talking about offering sacrifices to the demigods and offering fruit to Vishnu, the importance of doing that. But, ultimately, he's trying to get us to, Krishna, gradually, gradually showing us, you have to offer everything to me. Uh, he talks about this in the seventh chapter. The men of less intelligence offer yoga to demigods in order to get some material benefit but it comes from me alone. We talked about this already on the first day. So, ultimately, everything has to be offered to Vishnu. This is what Krishna will teach us in a gradual manner in the third chapter of the Gita. Anabhavanti bhutani parjanyad anasambhava yajnat bhavati bhav parjanyo yajna karma Samud Bhavan, all living bodies subsist on grain, not Bhavanti Bhutani. All living beings subsist on grains. You have to have grains. Without grains, they cannot be living. Arjanya Alasam Bhavan. And grains require rain. Yajnat Bhavati Parjanyo. And rain requires Yagya. Yatna karma samudbhava. So, we must have grain. And we cannot have, we must have grains to live, and we must have rain to get the grains, and we must have yagya to have the rain. What is yagya? Yagya is paying the bill. You have water department, huh? If you don't pay the water bill, 
Will the water come in the tap? No, it will not come. Water bill has to be paid, then water comes. This is the system. There is a system. You have to pay the dues. So, what is the yagya for this age? Yes, Harinam Sankirtan. By doing this yagya, all yagyas to all devas to everyone is accomplished. Everything is accomplished simply by doing Harinam Sankirtan. By doing this yagya, then we pay our bill. <laughs> then rain will come. One time, Srila Gorba Vindamaraj went to uh, Spain. And uh, they had not had rain in one year. It was very serious. And all the devotees, everyone had done some prayers. Muslims, Christians, Jews, devotees, everybody did prayer. But, no rain. A Guru Vinamaraj came. He said, I heard there has been no rain. He said, have you done? I said, yes, yes, we did, Maharaj, we did. He said, okay, I will do. And some of the God brothers got up and walked out. Oh, what do you think he is doing? We have done already, Harinam. We have already done. So they left. And he began chanting, 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 chanting. Clouds came. <laughs> but during his chanting? Yeah. Then rain came. <laughs> then all the God brothers came. <laughs> they all came. Okay, we're sorry. Now we understand who you are. <laughs> Rudas told me a beautiful story one time. About the power of the desire of a pure devotee. He had gone up on the roof of that building in Mayapur, the first building, the Lotus building. Prabhupada had a room on the roof. He lived up on the roof. Because his Guru Maharaj also lived on the roof of this building. So he was living in that room and Guru, Guru Das went up there to see if he could uh, talk with him. Guru Das writes this in his book. So he goes up there. And he makes some noise on the roof and then Prabhupada comes out. Who's there? Who's there? And goes, oh, no, it's only me, Prabhupada. Oh, yeah. How are you? How are you? And they begin talking about this. And Guru Das said, Prabhupada went to the side where the wall was, the guard wall on the, on the roof. And he was looking out in those days, there was no buildings. It was just fields everywhere. As far as your eyes could see, there were fields. So Prabhupada was looking out over the fields. The sky was overcast, but no rain. No rain. For a long time, no rain. So Prabhupada looked at Guru Das, he told him, the farmers, they are praying for rain. And Guru Das said, Prabhupada lifted his hand like this. He said, let them have it. And when his hand came down, Guru Das said, thunder shot across the sky. It was rumbling. The whole sky started to rumble. And then lightning started striking everywhere. And then rain came down all night, all morning, rain, 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 rain. <coughs> Simply Prabhupada wanted to let them have <laughs> So powerful. Just wave his hand at the rain. So when one is in this level of pure devotion, then simply by their intention, it can happen. Simply by their intention, their desire. But that sound, let them have it, the sound vibration. By that sound vibration, 
everything was transformed. This is the power of pure Shabda Brahma coming from the lips of pure food. So, this is third chapter of Gita. Third chapter of Gita is about offering the fruits of your work. Yad yad acharyata shreshtas tat tat eva taro jnana jnana sayat pramanam kuru de lokas tad nahavartate Whatever action is performed by a great man, common man follows in his footsteps. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. So, very important. Huh? What uh, is given here in the uh, third chapter that we have to be an example? That's why Prabhupada told us to have good standards of practice. Gurudev told us to have good standards of practice and be an example and Prabhupada was always very proud. He used to go everywhere. See my disciples, they have shaved heads, no meat, no fish, no eggs. Huh? Remember? No drugs, no alcohol. I have turned the hippies into happies. Whenever he would have press conference, he would say, See? See what I have, has happened? See what has happened. So, very important. And we have to keep those standards, and if we and only keep the standards by association. Yad yad acharya tashrishna. So Prabhupada very kindly sent Gurudev, or Govinda Maharaj and Srila Gurudev to again give association. To teach us Srila Srila Maharaj. Srila Gurudev came and he went everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Okay. So now I will show you how to become happy again. <laughs> fortunate to get the association of such great sadhus. And other persons also went to different places in the world. Huh? Srila Prabhupada asked his god brother Bhaktivai Bhakti Maharaj to do that as well. And he went to Italy and so many devotees were crying. And then Bhai Bhakti Maharaj came and made them all happy to remember Krishna again. Isn't it? She is a disciple of Bhai Bhakti And like this, Prabhupada sent so many messengers to help us. Okay, so now I will talk about the verse. Krishna mentions in verses 22, 23, 24 that he also engages in work as an example to others. And then verse 27, Prakriti Kriyamanani Gunai Karmani Sarvasa Ahamkara Vimudadma Kartaha Viti Manyate. That the bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature thinks himself to be the doer of activities which are in actuality carried out by nature. Bewildered by the modes of material nature, the ignorant fully engage themselves in material activities and become attached, but the wise should never, should not unsettle them, although these duties are inferior due to the performer's lack of knowledge. It is far better to discharge one prescribed duties, even though they may be faulty, than another's duties. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is another's is better than engaging in another's duties for to follow another's path is dangerous. So these are all important instructions about uh, understanding how the soul is being forced by the modes of material nature and the, the body is being forced to, by the modes of nature to act in a certain way. Uh -huh. But the soul is independent. And due to the force of the modes of material nature, someone may be acting in a way which is not, uh, appears, appears to not be in his best interest. But the wise man doesn't disturb that. 
We saw how Gurudev gently brought each person along according to their ability to surrender. As you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly, Krishna says. Huh? As you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. I reward those persons according to their surrender. Not that uh, everyone, all paths lead to the ultimate goal. <laughs> yes, all paths lead to Rome. This is the teaching of uh, the Maya body. Yes, whatever path, jnana, karma, yoga, raja yoga, bhakti yoga, all same, all one. Everything goes to the same place. No. As they surrender unto me, I reward them according to What is the Sanskrit again? Yeyatam am prabhadyante tam sadaiva vijayam. As they surrender unto me, I reward them according to Okay. So, Now we go, we, we don't have a lot of time, so we're going to talk about the, we're going to try and talk about the fourth and the sixth chapter. In the fourth chapter, the Parampara is talked about, it's explained, the important thing of Parampara, Prabhupada, Mamraja, Ishaya, Udu. Surrendering to the Guru uh, is given also Krishna, uh, why Krishna appears, how he appears, verses 7, 8, and 9 are given. Uh, explanations are given there. And the process of transforming everything by Krishna consciousness. In verse 24 of the fourth chapter, Prabhupada gives a purport, a very powerful purport. Everyone should read that purport. The 24th verse of the fourth chapter. In that purport, Prabhupada gives an explanation of how the process of Krishna consciousness transforms everything to Brahman. Very important to understand this purport. And it's only in Prabhupada's purport. Gurudev doesn't talk about this. Prabhupada talks about it in his purport. So please read that verse in purport and understand what Prabhupada is giving us in understanding the transformation of everything back into he said and he, he says in the purport this is the process of Krishna consciousness to spiritualize everything to transform everything back into uh, Brahman to spiritual from the material explains it in great detail very beautiful explanation and also uh, uh, in the 34th verse, the process of accepting Guru. Tadvidi pranipadena pariprashnena sevaya. Upadekshyami te yanam yami vas tatvadarshi. The tatvadarshi can impart the truth to those persons who surrender in the proper mood and offer service. The service is required. Pariprashnena sevaya. Without service, one does not get response. Uh, one does not get blessing. By the practice of bhakti and by offering service to the Guru, then when you read the verses, when you hear from the sadhu, things become revealed. Very important. Sixth chapter. I want to give a brief overview of the sixth chapter. We talked about it the other day, Astanga Yoga. Huh? The eight divisions. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Eight divisions of Astanga Yoga. Eight divisions. The first four are just to prepare you. Just to prepare you to actually perform the process. First, following all the rules and regulations, Yama, Niyama. Uh, giving up all attachment to uh, material sense pleasures. Intoxidai, Nandava Pranam, Bhaktivinanda, Padmanava Maharaj. So, uh, these four, the four uh, principles that Gurudev Prabhupada has given us, uh, no 
intoxication, no gambling, no meat eating, no illicit sex, all of this is given. Uh, so, therefore, uh, <clears throat> this is the beginning, yam and niyam. Uh, and then, asana, performing the asans in order to limber up the body. Why? Ultimately, the body should be strong and healthy so that one can sit in the lotus position for hours and days and weeks and months on end. So, asanas. Then, pranayam. By doing the pranayam, the breathing exercise, one uh, comes to the point, one comes to the point of what? He comes to the point of the mind. keeping the mind focused. It helps to all oh, there's seven chakras in the body. Uh, Muladhar chakra and Swadhisthana chakra and Manipur chakra and Anhat chakra and Vishuddha chakra and Agna chakra and the Sahasra chakra, seven chakras in the body. And these seven chakras uh, are uh, the subtle threads that connect the subtle body, mind, intelligence, and ego, to the gross physical body. And the desires that one meditates on in the subtle body by the mind and analyzes by the intelligence descend into the physical body through the chakras. So aligning the chakras, balancing them through mechanical means of pranayama helps to keep all of the seven chakras in line and helps one to focus with the Agna chakra and Sahasra chakra. So pranayama is given as a mechanical means for balancing your life airs, the five life airs as well, in which the consciousness floats on the five life airs. Uh, consciousness floats on the uh, uh, Apanvat, Samanvat, Pranvat, Udanvat, and Vyanvat, five different life airs. So the consciousness floats on those airs. So by mechanical means you balance the airs, you balance the chakras, and then Pratyahara. Empty the mind. Now all the airs are lined up, the chakras are lined up, everything is then pratyahara. You empty the mind. Dharana, you focus the mind on that emptiness. Dhyan. Now you begin to meditate, either on super soul or Brahman according to the lineage that you're in, uh, in the Sangha Yoga. And then samadhi, you achieve a vision of the Brahman or the Super Soul, Paramatma. So when Krishna describes all this to Arjuna, Arjuna says, Oh, Krishna, this is very difficult. I cannot do this process. Go to the mountains <laughs> and perform this yoga. I cannot do too complicated for me. Very complicated system. And uh, also, Arjuna says, uh, what will happen to me if I cannot complete this yoga? Then I, I have given up the material pleasures and uh, at the same time, I, everything is, uh, I've lost everything. I've lost everything. And Krishna tells him, don't worry. The yogi will take birth again in an exalted family or a wealthy family and he will get a chance to begin again. He will keep within the process of bhakti. So then, after Krishna has described all these different systems, he says at the end of the sixth chapter, Yogi Namapi Sarvesham Mantatanam Tarantanam Shadavam Bajate Yomam Sayur Mutamayur that of all processes of yoga, yogi nama, peace, of all kinds of yogis, 
who is embracing me within his heart who has an inner embrace of love with me who is most intimately united with me in the process of yoga of all your antaratmana who is most intimately united shradavan bhajate yomam who has shraddha through worship in bhakti through worshiping me with faith in bhakti yoga that person is most antaratmana most intimately united same muktam mata I consider him the highest yogi, the Rahmi yogi. He is superior to all other yogis. Yogi Nama Pisarvish. Amongst all of them, Yusave Yukta. He is the highest. So we end in the sixth chapter with Krishna declaring that the Bhakti yogi is superior to the Karmi yogi, the Jnani yogi, all other yogis, Sankhya yogi, every yogi, Astanga yogi. Bhakti is the superior process. Bhakti is the best process. And we go to the seventh chapter where he begins to explain some bandha. How you can have that antaratmana, that intimate relationship with me, that communion with me by the process of bhakti. So that begins middle six chapters and seven chapter of Gita. So we'll speak about that next week, right? Next week. And you, you want to see me more some days? Huh? Oh, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow we will talk. That's right. Tomorrow and then the next week I begin, I will do one class and the week after I do two. So tomorrow I will talk about the middle six chapters, and then the next week we'll talk about Yan Yoga. Okay? Thank you very much. Any questions you want to ask? You have questions? Prashna? Ah. In the first six chapters, there is one prayer, Apichet Sudaracharo. Apichet Sudaracharo. You haven't. That's not the first six chapters. Chapter. That's the ninth chapter, okay. verse number 30. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> Happy Chetsura. Thank you. Verse 30. Right? He knows all the verses. Memorize all. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other question? No question? Thank you. Much help with the previous doctor.
Switch this thing off. Yeah, this one is okay. okay. Yeah. 